Or now we are going to discuss about the neonatal jaundice. So what is a neonatal jaundice? So neonatal jaundice, how we call it, ictus, is a high level of bilirubin in the blood. So why high level of bilirubin? There are many reasons for it, but uh, what we let's start from the basic is that uh, when a uh, infant, a newborn comes to you, how will you identify the jaundice? Where do you look? First, let's start from the practical point of view. Okay. If infant comes in front of you, how will you see that he is a jaundice or a thrust? How will you check? First thing you need to check it on under the sunlight. Sunlight will give us the proper idea whether it is a ectoric or not. Second thing, first of all, we we'll look into the sclera. Sclera is the first to get yellowish distillation and last to clear from the yellowish distillation. As long as jaundice comes down, uh, we may expect that the severity of bilirubin level are increasing in the So, this is the first sign we identify about interest in the sclera of the eye, white part of the eye. Next slide. So basically, uh, the, see the, with the definition of the jaundice, it means that uh, the serum bilirubin, we may be direct or indirect, are increased in the blood, blood, the level of serum bilirubin is the increase in the blood. And uh, if we go for the adult definition, it is a more than 2 mg per deciliter. And in the newborn, it is a 5 mg per day. It's called ictus. But let us focus on the newborn, not on pediatric also. So, why the level of the bilirubin is important? See, the, there is a normogram chart for the according to hours of the age, uh, uh, age hours and the level of the bilirubin. So, depending on the chart and other this factor uh, and some sort of point we plot it on the chart and we might get the information that whether the baby need phototherapy or whether the baby need the axial transfusion or whether we need to do wait and watch. So more than 5 mg per day is a clinically jaundice but whether to take any action or not it requires a serial bilirubin monitoring or maybe clinical monitoring and we can decide the further course of the action. Most of baby doesn't require phototherapy. 95, more than 95 percent, I don't think, doesn't require. Less than 5 percent may require some sort of phototherapy. And uh, less than 1 percent, I think 0.1 or 2 percent, with respect to may require extent transfusion. So basically, it is a, it is a normal bilirubin metabolism. See the, what happened that uh, some sort of uh, hemolysis are happening everywhere in the body, right? Intravascular, extravascular, the hemoglobin got converted to unconjugated bilirubin and it unconjugated bilirubin uh, binds with the albumin, pass on to the liver and they get conjugated, bil conjugated bilirubin and pass in the biliary system and uh, goes into portal vein and uh, enterohepatic circulation and uh, it secretes via Right, which will extract it uh, in the via small and large the large intestine to feces. Okay, and uh, some sort of uh, urobilinogen uh, extracted via urine. So basically, in neonatal jaundice, it is an unconjugated hyperbilirubin. Why? Because that uh, enzyme is responsible in the hepatocyte, uh, responsible for the a conversation of the uh, unconjugated to conjugate hemoglobin are less active and other is a poor enterohepatic circulation. So the process of getting conjugated bilirubin is little bit slow. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah. So the special characteristic of why do you not Neonatal newborns are more prone to getting the bilirubin amia uh, because of short lifespan of the red blood cells because of fetal hemoglobin. 
there is a more chances of the hemolysis and more hemolysis leads to more production of the bilirubin, mostly unconjugated bilirubin. Second, next one, uh, because of less albumin and uh, less capacity of albumin, unconjugated bilirubin binds with the albumin and it helps in the transification, uh, transportation and which leads to further metabolism. Uh, which may cannot unconjugated to conjugated and which pass to the enterohepatic circulation and excreted via feces and urine. So, a level of albumin a little bit low. Next one low capability of hepatitis, as I mentioned later. See, less Y protein, Z protein, and uh, the develop, and as I mentioned previously, the enzyme which uh, urobilin is an enzyme which is required to convert the unconjugated into conjugated bilirubin are less in quantity and quality. So, uh, there is a loss of backlog of the conjugated bilirubin and which may, might appear as a jaundice. Yeah, so high workload, so because of backlog, there is a high workload of the hepatic intraoperative circulation, low, uh, less bacterial, low enzyme activity, low high level of bilirubin in oil, amiconium, so that's all the factors are uh, important in the new one. It takes time for the maturation of the system. So increase in RBC, next one. So the water like a white, no, 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 high RBC, short, R, uh, short RBC times one, immature hepatic uptake and conjugation as I mentioned to you and increase enterohepatic circulation. Next one. So, uh, this is a clinical examination guidance. So, if the ictrus in the face are um, face and neck only, it is less severe. If it is a chest, it is a two. At three is a, around abdomen umbilical level. It's a, and if the grade 4 and 5, we need to check the serum bilirubin level. 5 and because 5 of palm and soul are that is, it means that the baby mostly need a photo therapy. It is a rough guidance. Not ten is your should formula. <coughs> but again, remember, examination should be done under the sunlight. Okay? Next one. So, uh, as we mentioned, that a clinical assessment of jaundice area of body will be level. If the face is only looking extra extent, it is maybe 4 to 8. Upper abdomen chest, mean, chest part means 5 to 12. Abdomen and lower upper thigh 8 to 16. Arms and lower legs 11 to 18. And palms and sore more than 15, which is a roughly criteria to start a photograph. Next. So, what are the characteristics of the physiological jaundice? See, the, at this point of time, we need to differentiate between the physiological and the pathological jaundice. These all the mechanisms we have discussed are responsible for the physiological jaundice. It is uh, mostly harmless and the maximum it required for uh, required the light treatment only for the therapy, not more than. But the key being a pediatrician, being a neonologist, he is to identify or may differentiate between the pathological and non-pathological jaundice. Why it is important? Because sometimes when the unconjugated bilirubin level increases within the body, uh, it saturates the albumin level in the body. And by the time with less albumin, it crosses the blood-brain barrier and uh, it uh, deposited in the basal ganglia and which leads to conductors. Conductors uh, is a very bad prognosis regarding the neurodevelopment outcome, and it is a common cause of the dystonic CD. So it is a significant neurodevelopmental uh, prognosis, a uh, bad, bad prognosis. So that's why it's a duty of a pediatric neurologist to identify uh, the if, uh, and, uh, whether it is a physiological or pathological. So let's look at the characteristic of the physiological jaundice. See the 
make one please please go back side yeah so what are the characters of your mostly are the normal physiological jaundice which is because of the limitation of the physiology as we discussed previously appears after the 24 hour maximum intensity on the fourth or fifth day uh maybe on seven day of day term uh serum level less than 15 mostly it is less than 15 sometime uh, it it is not detectable up to 14 to 20 uh, days uh mostly doesn't require a treatment but yeah as i mentioned maybe should watch however for the worsening of the jobs so let me discuss some important uh, aspect regarding the physiological junkies most important variation the one is called exa uh, breast feeding jaundice and one is called a breast milk jaundice so initially what happened in first few days see when the three to less say that two to five days the breast feeding is relatively low in quantity that is why baby is look baby looking partially dehydrated because of partially dehydrated status the serum bilirubin might uh, might get increased level of we get might we get increased level of serum bilirubin and which is called breast feeding jaundice because of low feeding supply again we need to chart the bilirubin level according to the, uh, the baby's use factor and take a decision whether we need any further treatment or not second thing on the later days say after seven to ten days or further or more called is a breast milk jaundice one entity it is a, always a diagnosis of exclusion but why breast milk jaundice but there is one substance called pregnenolone in the breast milk and which might affect the conjugation of the bilirubin in the liver so we call it breast milk jaundice although it is a diagnosis of exclusion but still we don't need any treatment for it just wait and watch so this is so variation we might include in the physiological jaundice uh, next one now pathological jaundice so which are the common pathological jaundice uh, there are four common variety uh, which we need to rule out initially within 24 of life uh, I, don't, I can set it a risk factor uh, uh, so let's first see the characteristic of the physical it appears within the 24 hours so jaundice appear within the 24 hours still uh, we need to plot it on the appropriate chart, icterus chart, depending on the gestation age. I think a preterm chart, full term chart, depending on the hour of the life. Life. So, uh, gestation, gestation age, uh, hours versus bilirubin level. Bilirubin is our level, uh, hours of life. We need to plot it on chart and take decision according to whether we need. Any phototherapy, no treatment, phototherapy, or exit transfusion. So, for entity we commonly presents uh, within the 24 hour of life in which we, we might need immediate treatment. Let's say that the RH incompatibility, mother blood group is negative, father is positive, and there is isoimmunization. So, from the second pregnancy onward, uh, second pregnancy, I am using word second pregnancy, not a second baby. If the previous is a abortion gain, also baby may sensitize. So from second pregnancy or no, onwards, maybe we ask uh, babies, uh, RBCs might sensitize. Yes, uh, RBCs might uh, uh, sensitize, and uh, which may lead to loss of hemolysis and uh, skills get increased risk of the hyperbilirubin second is a uh, apo incompatibility means uh, mom's blood group is a o and father blood group is a a or b and which leads to the sense isosensitization, sensitization and which leads to increased hemoglobin uh in increased hemolysis and increased chance of pathological jaundice uh, first one baby generally usually affected with the death uh, there is a g6 pd deficiency although g6 pd deficiency it is possible we, uh, it's very not common that it get present on the first day of life or uh, because there is to be some history they can they come into contact with some medicine or uh, 
some sort of naphthalene bond which we use to preserve a cloth or some sort of vitamin K or some medicine and they contact with that medicine and they uh, they get uh, which can lead to the hemolysis. Another is uh, in some cases the birth from a cephalohematoma. That cephalohematoma is a collection of the blood within the skull wall and uh, which might lead to hemolysis and increases prophylaxis. Other are rare causes out there, uh, a typical breath of anomaly. Other is uh, some sort of prolonged jaundice, we can say there is septicemia, hypothyroidism, down syndrome, or uh, urinary tract infection, or any other jaundice syndrome, uh, like a uh, Fickland Dazzle syndrome, Domin type 1, type 2, Domin Johnson syndrome, Lotter syndromes, neonatal hepatitis, or uh, biliary atresia, lots of there. But these are the common causes. Right? So, the characteristics of the pathological jaundice is, uh, is appear within the 24 hours of age, increase of the bilirubin more than 5 mg per deciliter per day is a way. Serum bilirubin mostly more than 15 days old. We mostly we need a therapy or a Persistent or maybe require a blood transfusion. Jaundice may persist for the 14 days. Stool or white color stool. So the clay color stool, white color stool may be because of direct component of the jaundice, which is common with the biliary atresia. Okay. And the thing is why we need to identify the biliary atresia as soon as is possible. Because if we able to identify the biliary atresia early, is said a less than eight week of age. We might offer him to the precise surgery and uh, which will delay the hepatic failure. After the eight week of uh, after the eight week of age, if we offer her surgery, so it is very less chances that we may preserve a liver. So basically, we take we are buying the time for the liver transplant.